Greetings and salutations. Okay, so I found the cemetery where my grandmother is buried today. And thought I was just going to, you know, talk about it a little bit today. So today is her birthday, May 28th. Um, she was born in 1898. And she's been gone since uh, 1994. Uh, Mutsi was her nickname. Uh, Maisie was her sister-in-law. And Mutsi and Maisie were... Were the dynamic duo, the troublemakers, kind of a Mungo Jerry Rumple Teaser kind of combination. They were great. Um, Nana Port was was uh, Maisie's actual nick or her actual name or her title, I guess. Um, they were fun. They were a lot of fun. So every year on Memorial Day weekend, we would go to the cemetery because that's where Grandpa Stib was buried. My grandmother was a widow for several years. Uh, they had married in 1926 had three children, um, my aunt in 1927, my uncle two years later in 29, and then my mom in 1942 was, <laughs> my, my grandmother had my mom at age 44. That was, oof, kind of wild back then too. So she, they had three children together. And then my grandmother, uh, lost her husband to a heart attack, a very sudden heart attack in 1963. Um, he actually died as the story was retold to me. Um, they were coming home from the grocery store, my aunt and my grandmother, and he died in their arms um, that day. And so she was a widow for an extremely long time. Uh, she came to live with us. Um, so I was born in 1970. Um, my parents got married in 65. Um, I think my dad got a chance to meet my grandfather, but it was my uncle that actually walked my mom down the aisle, you know, at the wedding and everything. And um, then I was born five years later. And then my grandmother took care of me because my mom went back to work, you know, I mean, immediately, like as fast as she could. Um, she's more of a career-focused kind of woman. That's just her thing. And uh, my grandmother and my aunts primarily were the ones that raised me and stuff. So for two years, they would drop me off at their house. And then in 72, my grandmother came to live with us. And it was wonderful. Um, my dad and my grandmother got along amazingly. I mean, for mother-in-law relationship, he got lucky. He had a really, really good one. Um, and they got along really, really, really well. And she took excellent care of me. She would make me, um, she would burn the grilled cheese sandwich. I remember we would go from, anytime we would move to a house from an electric stove to a gas stove or back and forth, the first two grilled cheese sandwiches were like, she, I'd hear the sound of the knife scraping away the, the you know, the burnt part and stuff because she had to get used to the oven all over again. Um, but there's a lot of really, really amazing stories about my grandmother that I, I miss and that I will retell. Um, okay, so the memories of my grandmother were got interrupted because I need to, like, start saving some space on my phone soon. Um, projects, projects, projects. Anyhow, um, more and more memories of my grandmother. Um, some quick tidbits. Um, every time I would sing Silent Night, she would cry because it would remind her of my grandfather. Um, she taught me the song Down by the Old Mill Stream. She would pray the rosary all day long. Oh my gosh, that woman, I swear, she was practically part nun. Um, she had a notepad labeled one, two, three, four, five, and six. And she would pray the first one. First rosary was for God. Second one for Jesus. Third one for Mary. Fourth one, saints. Five souls. Six, I don't know, probably the family. <laughs> I'm guessing at that list. Um, but she would, yeah, she, that, that was kind of her thing that she would do literally all day long in addition to cooking. Um, she didn't write any of her recipes down. Ugh. So my other grandmother did, thankfully. So when I try to make recreate my grandmother Mutsi's recipes, it's all from memory and a lot of experimentation. Um, she made these amazing salmon patties that I, I'm still working on getting that recipe just right. Um, I'm, I'm stubborn. I'll get it. I'll get it. And then she made this bacon dressing. The story of the bacon dressing goes like this. So she would make the bacon, you know, earlier in the afternoon, and I would always, always sneak into the kitchen and eat the bacon out of the pan. And she'd be like, what? Where'd all the bacon go? And she'd be like, Kristen, I'm like, what? <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> you know, it didn't even matter if the pan was hot. I'd just stick my little fingers in there and just nibble it all up and stuff. So usually I'd try to, try to stop, but I couldn't stop. It was bacon. So... <laughs> bacon dressing. Sometimes we'd, you know, have enough, you know, by the time mom and dad would come home for like a hot bacon dressing on a spinach salad. But I, yeah, if I smelled the bacon cooking, that was in there. Uh, grilled cheese sandwiches I mentioned before, that was a big one for her that she would make for me after school. 
Um, oh, and the other fun thing. So, you know those Eggo waffles? Grandma was perfect. She would make sure that there was butter inside every single square. <laughs> Yes, I am a big kid. But yeah, whenever she'd toast me, you know, uh, like Eggo waffles for after school for a snack, she would make sure the butter got into every single square just for me because she knew that's how I liked it. <laughs> she was great. I miss her immensely every, every day.